Good day everyone! Today we are going to talk about exponential functions. So what are exponential functions? So exponential functions look somewhat similar to functions you have seen before in that they involve exponents but there is a big difference in that the variable is now the power rather than the base. So previously, you have dealt with such functions as f of x is equal to x squared, where the variable x was the base and the number 2 was the power. In the case of exponentials, however, you will be dealing with functions such as f of x is equal to 2 raised to the power of x, where the base is the fixed number and the power is the variable. One of the popular exponential function is f of x is equal to e raised to the power of x, where e is the Euler's number and is approximately equal to 2.71828. An exponential function is defined as a function with a positive constant other than 1 raised to a variable exponent. It can be defined by the equation f of x is equal to a raised to the power of x or y is equal to a raised to the power of x where x is a variable and a is a constant or base of the function and should be a positive number except one so right now let us all find out how to determine an exponential function exponential functions can be determined by the equation f of x is equal to a raised to the power of x where a is greater than 0, but a is not equal to 1. These examples of exponential functions. First example that we have is f of x is equal to 6 raised to the power of x. Second is y is equal to 7 raised to the power of 5x plus 4 minus 7 raised to the power of x. Third is f of x is equal to 5 raised to the power of 2x plus 1 minus 25. Fourth is y is equal to negative 2 times 2 raised to the power of x. And last but definitely not the least is f of x is equal to 1 over 2 raised to the power of x plus 1. Let us all observe these equations and determine why these are not exponential functions. First off is f of x is equal to 1 raised to the power of x is not an exponential function because the base is 1. Next is f of x is equal to 2 times negative 3 raised to the power of x is also not an exponential function because the base of the exponent is negative. Another is y is equal to x raised to the power of 3x is not an exponential function because the base is a variable, while f of x is equal to 25 squared is not an exponential function because the exponent is not a variable. Now that we know what an exponential function is, let us all learn how to find its zeros. There are two ways to solve an exponential function. The first way is by exponential equations, wherein we can use exponential equations when the terms can be expressed with the same base. The other way is by logarithmic functions, wherein this can be used when a term cannot be converted to a number with the same base as the exponential expressions. However, in this topic, we will only focus on solving exponential functions through exponential equations. These are the following steps. First thing that we need to do is to equate the function to zero. Next is to isolate the exponential expressions or transfer the whole number or constant to the right side of the equal symbol. Note that when transferring or transposing a number, remember that the sign changes once it crosses the equal symbol. So for example, 2 to the power of x plus 2 equals 0 becomes 2 to the power of x equals to negative 2 or 2 to the power of x minus 2 equals 0 becomes 2 to the power of x equals
equals to 2. The next thing that we are going to do is to determine whether the constant have the same base with the function. If not, convert the constant to an expression to make it have the same base. For example, 9 is equal to 3 squared or 64 is equal to 4 cubed. After determining this, we can ignore the base and write an equation for the exponents only. Note that if a number doesn't have an exponent, for example, 5, then the exponent is 1. And finally, solve and simplify. We can now apply these and solve the following examples. First equation is f of x is equal to 5 raised to the power of 2x plus 1 minus 25. The first thing that we need to do is to equate it to 0. So 5 raised to the power of 2x plus 1 minus 25 is equal to 0. Then isolate or transfer. So 5 raised to the power of 2x plus 1 is equal to 25. Now we are going to determine the base and convert it if necessary. So 5 raised to the power of 2x plus 1 is equal to 5 squared. Now, we are going to ignore the base. So, it will be 2x plus 1 is equal to 2. And finally, we can solve and simplify to get the x. So, 2x is equal to 2 minus 1 will become 2x is equal to 1. Then, divide both sides with 2, so x will become 1 half, which is the zero of the function. The next equation is f of x is equal to 4 raised to the power of 2x plus 3 minus 1. So just like the first equation, we must equate it to 0. So 4 raised to the power of 2x plus 3 minus 1 is equal to 0. Then isolate or transfer. So 4 raised to the power of 2x plus 3 is equal to 1. Next is determine the base and convert it if necessary. So 4 raised to the power of 2x plus 3 is equal to 4 raised to the power of 0. Note that any number with the exponent 0 is equal to 1. So now we can ignore the base. So 2x plus 3 is equal to 0. And finally, solve and simplify. So 2x is equal to negative 3. 2x over 2 is equal to negative 3 over 2. x is equal to negative 3 over 2. And negative 3 over 2 is the zero of the function. Our third equation is y is equal to 7 raised to the power of 2x plus 1 minus 7 raised to the power of 3x minus 2. So the first thing that we need to do is to equate it to 0. So it will be 7 raised to the power of 2x plus 1 minus 7 raised to the power of 3x minus 2 is equal to 0. And then we are going to isolate since there are two exponential expressions. So it will be 7 raised to the power of 2x plus 1 equals to 7 raised to the power of 3x minus 2. And then we are going to determine the base. So it will be 7 raised to the power of 2x plus 1 is equal to 7 raised to the power of 3x minus 2. And since the base is the same, then we are going to proceed to the exponent. So it will be 2x plus 1 is equal to 3x minus 2. Now we are going to solve and simplify. So 2x minus 3x is equal to negative 2 minus 1. Negative x is equal to negative 3. Negative x over negative 1 is equal to negative 3 over negative 1. x is equal to 3, which makes it the zero of the function. The fourth equation is f of x is equal to 11 raised to the power of 3x minus 8 minus 121 raised to the power of 2x. So once again, we are going to equate it to 0, so it will be 11 raised to the power of 3x minus 8 minus 121 raised to the power of 2 equals 0. And then next is we are going to isolate since there are two exponential expressions. So it will be 11 raised to the power of 3x minus 8 equals to 121 
raised to the power of 2x. And now we are going to determine the base and again convert it if necessary. So it will be 11 raised to the power of 3x minus 8 equals to 11 squared raised to the power of 2x. So now it will be 11 raised to the power of 3x minus 8 equals to 11 raised to the power of 4x. And then we are going to ignore the base. So it will be 3x minus 8 equals to 4x. And then we are going to solve and simplify it. So it will be 3x minus 4x equals to 8. So negative x is equal to 8 because we subtracted 3x and 4x. And then negative x over negative 1 equals to 8 over negative 1. So the answer is negative 8, which is the zero of the function. Our final equation is y is equal to 9 raised to the power of x squared minus 3 raised to the power of x plus 3. So now we are going to equate it to zero. So 9 raised to the power of x squared minus 3 raised to the power of x plus 3 is equal to 0. Then isolate since there are two exponential expressions. So 9 raised to the power of x squared equals to 3 raised to the power of x plus 3. Next is determine the base and convert it if necessary. So 3 squared raised to the power of x squared is equals to 3 raised to the power of x plus 3. 3 raised to the power of 2x squared is equal to 3 raised to the power of x plus 3. Ignore the base and proceed with the exponents. So 2x squared is equal to x plus 3. And now solve and simplify. 2x squared is equal to x plus 3. 2x squared minus x minus 3 is equal to 0. Since this is a quadratic equation, we can simplify it by factoring. So 2x minus 3 times x plus 1 is equal to 0. So 2x minus 3 is equal to 0 and x plus 1 is equal to 0. So transfer 3 and 1 to the other side, which makes it 2x is equal to 3 and x is equal to negative 1. 2x over 2 is equal to 3 over 2. And the other is x is equal to 3 over 2. Finally, 3 over 2 and negative 1 are the zeros of the function. Let us now move on to graphing an exponential function. When graphing an exponential functions, these are the following steps to be followed. First is prepare a table for points of our coordinates. We recommend 8 columns and 2 rows for our x and y coordinates and should at least result to 7 pairs of coordinates. Then start with labeling the rows with x and y in the first column. Next is assign the values for x. We should start putting 0 in the middle. In this video, we recommend using the nearest number possible to 0 for the positive on the right side of 0, which are numbers 1, 2, 3, and the negative values on the left side, which are numbers negative 1, negative 2, and negative 3. Note, if you would like to use another value, make sure that the negative values reflect the positive values. In simpler terms, for example, if your positive values are 6, 8, and 10, then your negative values should be negative 6, negative 8, and negative 10. After assigning values of x, solve for the values of y by substituting the x values to the function one by one. After completing the table, plot the coordinates. And finally, connect the points to see the graph. To easily understand and visualize these steps, let us graph these following equations. For the equation f of x is equal to 3 raised to the power of x, the first thing that we need to do is to prepare a table, label the rows with x and y, then assign values for x. After assigning values for x, solve for y. Now let's move on and substitute x. So f of x is equal to 3 raised to the power of x. It will be f of 0 
is equal to 3 raised to the power of 0. The answer is y is equal to 1. f of x is equal to 3 raised to the power of x. It will be f of 1 is equal to 3 raised to the power of 1. The answer is y is equal to 3. f of x is equal to 3 raised to the power of x. It will be f of 2 is equal to 3 raised to the power of 2. The answer is y is equal to 9 f of x is equal to 3 raised to the power of x it will be f of 3 is equal to 3 raised to the power of 3 the answer is y is equal to 27 f of x is equal to 3 raised to the power of x it will be f of negative 1 is equal to 3 raised to the power of negative 1 the answer is y is equal to 1 over 3 f of x is equal to 3 raised to the power of x. It will be f of negative 2 is equal to 3 raised to the power of negative 2. The answer is y is equal to 1 over 9. f of x is equal to 3 raised to the power of x. So it will be f of negative 3 is equal to 3 raised to the power of negative 3. The answer is 1 over 27. Now that we have the values for x and y, we can plot the coordinates, then connect the points. And now, we can see our final graph in the picture. The second equation is f of x is equal to 3 over 2 raised to the power of x. Once again, we are going to prepare a table. Next is label the rows and assign values for x and solve for y. Now let's substitute. So f of x is equal to 3 over 2 raised to the power of x. So it will be f of 0 is equal to 3 over 2 raised to the power of 0. The answer is y is equal to 1. f of x is equal to 3 over 2 raised to the power of x. And then it will be f of 1 is equal to 3 over 2 raised to the power of 1. The answer is y is equal to 3 over 2. f of x is equal to 3 over 2 raised to the power of x. It will be f of 2 is equal to 3 over 2 raised to the power of 2. The answer is y is equal to 9 over 4. f of x is equal to 3 over 2 raised to the power of x. It will be f of 3 is equal to 3 over 2 raised to the power of 3. The answer is y is equal to 27 over 8. f of x is equal to 3 over 2 raised to the power of x. It will be f of negative 1 is equal to 3 over 2 raised to the power of negative 1. The answer is y is equal to 2 over 3. f of x is equal to 3 over 2 raised to the power of x. It will be f of negative 2 is equal to 3 over 2 raised to the power of negative 2. The answer is y is equal to 4 over 9. Last but definitely not the least, f of x is equal to 3 over 2 raised to the power of x. It will be f of negative 3 is equal to 3 over 2 raised to the power of negative 3. The answer is y is equal to 8 over 27. Now that we have the values for x and y, we can plot the coordinates, then connect the points. And now, we can see our final graph in the picture. Our third equation is f of x is equal to 2 raised to the power of x plus 2 plus 1. Once again, we are going to prepare a table, then label the rows and assign values for x. Now, let's solve for y f of x is equal to 2 raised to the power of x plus 2 plus 1. It will be f of 0 is equal to 2 raised to the power of 0 plus 2 plus 1. The answer is y is equal to 5. f of x is equal to 2 raised to the power of x plus 2 plus 1. It will be f of 1 is equal to 2 raised to the power of 1 plus 2 plus 1. The answer is y is equal to 9 f of x is equal to 2 raised to the power of x plus 2 plus 1. It will be f of 2 is equal to 2 raised to the power of 2 plus 2 plus 1. 
The answer is y is equal to 17. f of x is equal to 2 raised to the power of x plus 2 plus 1. So it will be f of 3 is equal to 2 raised to the power of 3 plus 2 plus 1. The answer is y is equal to 33 f of x is equal to 2 raised to the power of x plus 2 plus 1 it will be f of negative 1 is equal to 2 raised to the power of negative 1 plus 2 plus 1 the answer is y is equal to 3 f of x is equal to 2 raised to the power of x plus 2 plus 1 it will be f of negative 2 is equal to 2 raised to the power of negative 2 plus 2 plus 1 the answer is y is equal to 2. Last but definitely not the least, f of x is equal to 2 raised to the power of x plus 2 plus 1. It will be f of negative 3 is equal to 2 raised to the power of negative 3 plus 2 plus 1. The answer is y is equal to 3 over 2. Now that we have the values for x and y, we can plot the coordinates, then connect the points. And now, we can see our final graph in the picture. The next equation is f of x is equal to 1 fourth raised to the power of x plus 1. Now, we are going to prepare a table, label the rows, and assign values for x. Then, solve for y. So, f of x is equal to 1 fourth raised to the power of x plus 1. It will be f of 0 is equal to 1 fourth raised to the power of 0 plus 1. The answer is y is equal to 1 fourth. f of x is equal to 1 fourth raised to the power of x plus 1. It will be f of 1 is equal to 1 fourth raised to the power of 1 plus 1. The answer is y is equal to 1 over 16. f of x is equal to 1 fourth raised to the power of x plus 1, it will be f of 2 is equal to 1 fourth raised to the power of 2 plus 1. The answer is y is equal to 1 over 64. f of x is equal to 1 fourth raised to the power of x plus 1, it will be f of 3 is equal to 1 fourth raised to the power of 3 plus 1. The answer is y is equal to 1 over 256 f of x is equal to 1 fourth raised to the power of x plus 1. It will be f of negative 1 is equal to 1 fourth raised to the power of negative 1 plus 1. The answer is y is equal to 1. f of x is equal to 1 fourth raised to the power of x plus 1. It will be f of negative 2 is equal to 1 fourth raised to the power of negative 2 plus 1. The answer is y is equal to 4. And f of x is equal to 1 fourth raised to the power of x plus 1. It will be f of negative 3 is equal to 1 fourth raised to the power of negative 3 plus 1. The answer is y is equal to 16. Now that we have the values for x and y, we can plot the coordinates, then connect the points. And now, we can see our final graph in the picture. And our last equation is f of x is equal to 7 raised to the power of negative x minus 2 plus 1. We are going to prepare a table, label the rows, and assign values for x. And the next thing that we are going to do is to solve for y. So f of x is equal to 7 raised to the power of negative x minus 2 plus 1. Substitute, so f of 0 is equal to 7 raised to the power of negative 0 minus 2. The answer is y is equal to 50 over 49. f of x is equal to 7 raised to the power of negative x minus 2 plus 1. And substitute f of 1 is equal to 7 raised to the power of negative 1 minus 2. The answer is y is equal to 344 over 343. f of x is equal to 7 raised to the power of negative x minus 2 plus 1. Substitute f of 2 is equal to 7 raised to the power of negative 2 minus 2. The answer is y is equal to 
2,402 over 2,401. f of x is equal to 7 raised to the power of negative x minus 2 plus 1. Once again, we are going to substitute. So f of 3 is equal to 7 raised to the power of negative 3 minus 2. The answer is y is equal to 16,808 over 16,807. f of x is equal to 7 raised to the power of negative x minus 2 plus 1. So it will be f of negative 1 is equal to 7 raised to the power of negative of negative 1 minus 2. So the answer is y is equal to 8 over 7 f of x is equal to 7 raised to the power of negative x minus 2 plus 1. It will be f of negative 2 is equal to 7 raised to the power of negative of negative 2 minus 2. The answer is y is equal to 2. f of x is equal to 7 raised to the power of negative x minus 2 plus 1. The then we are going to substitute. So f of negative 3 is equal to 7 raised to the power of negative of negative 3 minus 2. The answer is y is equal to 8. Now that we have the values for x and y, we can plot the coordinates, then connect the points. And now, we can see our final graph in the picture. Now that we learned how to graph an exponential function, let us all determine its properties. There are two classifications or groupings with different elements when it comes to the properties of exponential functions. First, when the base is greater than 1 and the variable of the exponent is positive like examples 1 to 3, here are the properties f of x is equal to a raised to the power of x where a is greater than 1 and x is positive the domain is all real numbers the range is y greater than 0 so the y shouldn't be negative the graph is increasing the graph is asymptotic to the x-axis as x approaches negative infinity the graph increases without bound as x approaches positive infinity it increases from left going to the right. The graph is continuous and the graph is smooth. As you can see, the A or the base of the examples 1 to 3 is greater than 1 and the exponents are all positive. Second, when the base is between 0 and 1 or the variable of the exponent is negative, like examples 4 and 5, the properties are f of x is equals to a to the power of x, where a is greater than 0 but less than 1, or x is negative. The domain includes all real numbers, the range of y is greater than 0, it forms a decreasing graph. The line in the graph above is asymptotic to the x-axis as x approaches positive infinity. The line increases without bound as x approaches negative infinity. It increases starting from the right going to the left. It is a continuous graph and it forms a smooth graph. On the first example, you can see that the base is lesser than 1, so the slope or the graph is in the negative, while the second example has a base that is greater than 1, but the x is negative, so the slope goes to the negative side. We can see the increase or decrease of the exponential function. That increase is called exponential growth while the decrease is called exponential decay. Exponential growth, the quantity increases very slowly at first and then rapidly. The rate of change increases over time. The rate of growth becomes faster as time passes. The rapid growth meant to be an exponential increase. The formula to define the exponential growth is y is equal to a times 1 plus r raised to the power of x, where r 
is the growth percentage. In exponential decay, the quantity decreases very rapidly at first and then slowly. The rate of change decreases over time. The rate of change becomes slower as time passes. The rapid growth is meant to be an exponential decrease. The formula to define the exponential decay is y is equal to a times 1 minus r raised to the power of x, where r is the decay percentage. However, these concepts will be discussed as you go farther in the lesson, which we sadly won't be able to tackle today. Moving on, let us talk about its applications in real life. The best thing about exponential functions is that they are so useful in real-world situations. Exponential functions are used to model populations, carbon date artifacts, help coroners determine time of death, compute investments, as well as many other applications. Three of the most common applications of exponential functions are population growth, exponential decay, and compound interest. This concludes our tutorial on exponential functions. We hope that you have learned a lot. Until next time, thank you so much for watching.